a diminishing Brazilian rainforest, the eruption of a volcano in Asia, continuing depletion of the Earth's ozone layer, government deficits and trade talks in Europe and North America. Though geographically distant, these powerful global forces affect your farming business as much as your own day-to-day -day decisions governing your operation. To survive in such a fiercely competitive market, efficiency in every aspect of farming must be assessed and updated constantly. The American farmer must achieve maximum efficiency to succeed in this competitive global market now and into the next millennium. With so many factors beyond your control, it is imperative that you seize control where possible and drive your farming operation in the right direction. Your choice of fertilizer and application method is one aspect you can control. Your informed decision here can determine the ultimate success of your operation. At the turn of the century, farmers were limited to manure to supply the nutrients needed to replenish the soil. While manure was effective, it supplied nutrients haphazardly and in quantities uncontrollable and unknown to the farmer. As a sole source of nutrients, it could not supply the total requirements of the crop. Starting in the 1940s and continuing into the 1950s, the fertilizer industry began to establish itself. Farmers heaped the new miracle fertilizers onto their soil with great abandon. The philosophy was that if a little is good, a lot is better. This was the era of over-fertilizing. In fact, this thinking continued right into the 1970s and 80s when fertilizer philosophy began to change. In the 90s, environmental concerns, tense economic times, and the notion of value for the dollar has come to the forefront in agriculture. Conservation has become the buzzword of the time. Farmers came to realize that more is not always better. Perhaps less fertilizer is more effective if factors such as placement, inherent nutrient levels in the soil, and crop requirements are taken into consideration. This presentation will focus on phosphate fertilization and its importance in your fertility program. As philosophies were changing, so were fertility programs. Three options were available for phosphate fertilization. Broadcast, side-banded, and seed place starter fertilizer. Broadcasting covers the entire soil surface with fertilizer, while side-banding places the fertilizer two inches beside and two inches below the seed in the planting operation. Seed place fertilizer is applied at the time of planting directly with the seed. But before we debate the pros and cons of these types of fertility programs, it's necessary to understand exactly how phosphate acts in the soil so that we know what we should expect it to achieve. The soil contains a bank of phosphate, most of which is tied up with aluminum, iron, and calcium in the plow layer. This represents some 400 to 8,000 pounds per acre of unavailable phosphate. More phosphate is contained in the organic matter and is continually released by biological activity in the soil. The phosphate that is maintained on the surface of the organic material and the minerals is called the soluble phosphate. When this combines with existing moisture in the soil, it becomes phosphate in solution. Only one half to one percent of the total phosphate is in this form. It's this phosphate in solution that the plant can readily use. When conditions are ideal, the phosphate in solution is replenished regularly and provides all the phosphate needed by the plant. So, why do we want to add phosphate to the soil if there is already enough there? Spring planting conditions are typically less than ideal. Cold and wet conditions slow down root growth, making it more important to have a high concentration of phosphate around the seed. With cold conditions, organic matter also decomposes more slowly, thereby releasing less phosphate into solution. Therefore, it is only necessary to supply phosphate to the plant early in the growing period when the soil cannot keep up due to less than ideal conditions. 
Ideally, we want the soil to supply as much of the phosphate as possible. This makes economic sense. Therefore, we have to take care of the soil to promote the best conditions possible. A number of conditions influence the natural balance of phosphate solubility and availability in the soil. pH, organic matter, drainage, and inherent soil type. Now that we know where the phosphate comes from and how it is made available to the plant, when and how do we need to add the phosphate? We'll use corn as an example. The seed itself and its primary root supplies enough phosphate to grow the plant to the two-leaf stage. After this, the plant can only take up the minuscule amount of phosphate that the soil can make available to this very small root system. Phosphate moves less than one-tenth of an inch in the soil. Therefore, the only phosphate the plant can take up is the phosphate the root happens to intercept. University research studies in the United States and Canada show that the highest requirements for phosphate in the tissue per gram of plant is before the plant reaches the six leaf stage or about 25 to 35 days after planting. The placement of side-banded fertilizer two inches beside and two inches below the seed leaves the plant potentially short of phosphate at the critical time prior to the six leaf stage. More recent results have come from a university study on corn. The two years of data collected show a seven bushel response to seed placed phosphate regardless of the soil test level. Side banded phosphate only gave a response at low soil test levels. At soil test levels of 15 parts per million or above, the only placement that gave a yield response was seed placed phosphate. Research has shown seed placed phosphate to be most effective. The phosphate goes where it's needed, when it's needed. In no-till or min-till operations, seed-placed fertilizer is especially superior as the most cost-effective method of applying phosphate. It's the origin, quality, and placement of phosphates that determine the overall effectiveness in achieving successful results.